What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. In the last video, we actually talked about, or we actually built our own simple clusters, but in the real world, there are already many tools that will help us manage clusters in production. And I'm, we're gonna be talking about a tool called PM2. Most of you have heard it. PM2 is a Node.js process manager, manager, and it'll allow you to manage zero downtime clusters in production. So, Let's install PM2. I already did it, but eh, we could do it again, right? So we're going to do npm i dash g because we're going to install it everywhere. I want to install it globally. And then it's literally called PM2. Um, after this, you can hit enter. I already did it, like I said. While that's installing, we could actually talk about this application, the simple app that we built. Um, so in this app, it contains a web server that will serve advice. So this is a variation of the last uh, code or last video is exactly the same. The only difference is that in line 17, we are logging the process ID along with the device and we're no longer serving the port. And then on 22, right here, on 22 this is a server that is going to run on port 3000. So this is the app that we're going to split into clusters and every request should give us some random advice from the options found in this array in line two, right here. So let's actually run this with PM2. So new terminal, PM2, start PM2.js dash I three. And dash I three just stands for, we're going to be running three instances of this application right here. And we could actually look it up. Let me actually pull up a, here we go. We could do localhost 3000 and we get our process ID with our advice. If you can't blind them with brilliance, baffle them with nonsense. Great advice. You should take that advice. So as you can see, this is still running right here. I could actually clear the terminal and actually do PM2 PM2 list to see what what I still have. So uh, this is a list that it's running. We, we have three instances and we're all all three of them are running PM2. I could also do PM2 uh, stop. PM2, that's the name of the uh, JS, the name, the name right here. So I'm gonna do PM2 stop PM2, and then it'll stop all of them. And I also could do PM2 delete PM2. And it'll delete all of them. Now we don't have any instances running. And let's actually start our application again using PM2, but we're gonna do it a little bit different. PM2 start uh, PM2 and then we're going to use dash I, but instead of actually putting a number, where's that at? dash I, we're going to do negative. It is going to be a number, but it's going to be a negative one. So when you use dash neg I negative one, PM2 will automatically select the number of instances that it should run for your current processor. So here you can see that it's running seven instances in our application, zero through six. This is pretty neat, right? And if you pull it up in our application or right here, and we reload it, you can see that we're gonna get a process uh, different. If you keep on reloading it, well, it's gonna take a while. You see that we get different advices, right? But we're gonna do it a, a test. So let's do load test. We've already explored this in the last video, I think, I'm not too sure. Or I know we explored load, load test in the last videos, dash N, and we're gonna run 2000 requests on HTTP, TP, local host 3000. And running this will simulate 2000 requests request to localhost 3000. And as this happens, all of these requests have been spanned out across our clusters. We could actually see that by running PM2 
or clear right now. Let's let's uh, clear our terminal, and then PM two list, and you can see that the memory is being allocated to uh, all of them. But the CPU it doesn't change that much. It do, it really depends on your CPU. I got a a, a kind of a high end CPU, so yeah, this kind of process or two thousand requests isn't really much for my CPU. But if you have a uh, a, a lesser known CPU, I guess you could say uh, you'll see a CPU change right here where you might have I don't know thirty two percent here and then thirty percent here, thirty two, thirty two, thirty one, thirty four, something like that. Okay, I don't know. So something else that we might want to check is our logs and we could actually do that with PM2 logs and you can see all of the uh, instances that is running. So we have five right here. We got a six that ran this advice. We have four that ran, ran this advice. We got zero that ran this, you know, you can see all everything. And this is just the last 15 lines of our log. So, to exit the log, we could use the control C. Yes. And let's do a clear so we don't have to see this anymore. One of my favorite features of this PM2 is actually PM2 monet. And this will bring up a monitor as you can see right now. And then we could do another load test. Let's do another load test of, I don't know, let's do 3000 this time. Let's see if we could actually get my CPU to sweat a little bit. And if you go back to the second one, you can see that here it is. Our CPU is changing real time and you'll see some uh, logging happening in a bit. Let me see what's going on. Ooh. Let's actually do it one more time, but let's, I don't know, make it 30,000. I'm just trying to see right now how long it's taking. We're right now at 25%. And we're not getting any PM2 logs, but there should be logs. I don't know what's going on, but the thing is that as you can see right here, they're using only uh, instance number five and they're trying to get that to the very top of, of its max capacity. And then once it reaches its max capacity, it'll start spreading out to the other instances. As you saw, some of these got uh, CPUs. You're seeing them. You're seeing them. I just don't know why it's not. It was working when I was testing it. Now it's not working. I have no idea. Let's actually get rid of this now and get rid of this PowerShell because I don't need it. And in here, PM2. I always like looking at my list uh, to see what's what's going on. Oh, look, we got some uh, actually percentage being used, my CPU being used. All right, anyways. So one of the features that we have with PM2 is zero downtime. So as you can see, everything is online and this actually make a change in our application. Let's say that we only want to, let's actually get rid of most of these and just say, yes and no, Th that's it. And down here I could do PM2 reload, reload and what do we want to reload? Well, it's the PM2 file that we have up there. And what this actually does is it automatically starts clusters one by one and averts the user traffic to clusters that aren't being restarted. So if let's say that all of them are being restarted, I mean, are being used except for six, it'll restart number six first and then divert traffic to number six. So that way it could restart some other clusters up, up above. Now, if you go back to our uh, web browser and reload the page as you saw it was just known yes yes and no which is pretty awesome right it didn't have to go down it just restarted by itself and didn't uh, give us a 404 for page not found so when it so when it actually comes to uh, scaling along the x-axis we don't have to reinvent the wheel there are already great tools out there that we can use also cloud services like AWS or Roku Cloudflare Cloudflare or Azure, Azure. I never knew how to pronounce that. I never knew Azure, Azure, Azure. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Those actually have tools that manage clusters baked into their environments already.
Now, it is important to know that sheer Node.js websites and API will run in production on many instances, so that way they will have they will never have to go down. That is it for this video, guys. I just wanted you to get uh, familiarized with a process process manager tool like PM2. There are other ones. Uh, I know one other forever. That's another one for Node.js. I'm pretty sure there's more than that. I've only used PM2 in forever. Uh, obviously, PM2 more. But yeah, explore if you want or you know read the docs for PM2. PM2 is a great library, the most popular one. But yeah, that is it for this video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, uh, I guess dislike. And leave a comment down below on what you thought about the video or how I could better myself. I know I do need to type better. Uh, that's one thing I'm trying to get better at. Um, and subscribe if you haven't. I really would appreciate that. So thank you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.